In the last videos, we explained the considerations for fatigue for steel buildings with cranes and classified the buildings as well as the cranes based on the expected lifted loads and the lifting frequency throughout the structure's life. We also listed the loads applied by the crane on the runway beam and steel structure. To watch both those videos, please click the link at the top or in the description below to cover the basis of crane loads on steel structures. In this video, we will learn how to design a runway beam for overhead cranes. We will also learn the most suitable runway beam design choice based on the crane and building classifications as well as the spans of the crane bridges and runways. Strength considerations for crane girder design are primarily controlled by fatigue for CMAA-70 Class E and F cranes and to some degree for Class D cranes. Wheel loads, wheel spacing and girder span are required for the design of crane girders. The expense of crane girder construction typically increases when built-up shapes are required because fatigue restrictions are more severe for built-up shapes. The difference between a rolled versus a built-up member using continuous fillet wells is a reduction in the allowable fatigue stress. The following summary for pre-selection of runway girders may prove to be helpful. For light cranes and short spans, use a wide flange beam. For medium cranes and moderate spans, use a wide flange beam and, if required, reinforce the top flange with a channel or angles. For heavy cranes and longer spans, use a plate girder. The plate girder should be laterally supported by a horizontal truss or solid plate at the top flange. For light and medium cranes, CMAA-70 classes A, B and C. The deflection of the runway beam should be limited to L over 600. For light and medium cranes, CMAA-70 class D, the deflection of the runway beam should be limited to L over 800. For mill cranes, CMAA-70 classes E and F, the deflection of the runway beam should be limited to L over 1000. Lateral deflection of the crane beam due to crane lateral loads should be limited to L over 400 for all cranes. The equations presented in the AISC specification for lateral torsional buckling strength are based upon the load being applied at the elevation of the neutral axis of the beam. We discussed those in a previous video, linked at the top and in the description below. If the load is applied above the neutral axis, for instant at the top flange of the beam, as is the case with crane runway beams, lateral torsional buckling resistance is reduced. When vertical and lateral loads are applied simultaneously, these two effects are cumulative. Another criterion related to crane runway beam design referred to in AISC specifications section J 10.4 is web sidesway buckling. This criterion is included to prevent buckling in the tension flange of a beam where flanges are not restrained by bracing or not stiffened by stiffeners and are subject to concentrated loads. This failure mode may be predominant when the compression flange is braced at closer intervals than the tension flange, or when a monosymmetric section is used with the compression flange larger than the tension flange, such as a wide flange beam with a cap channel. A maximum concentrated load is used as the limiting criterion for this buckling mode. For crane runway beams, the following design procedure is recommended as both safe and reasonable where fatigue is not a factor. Compute the required moment of inertia, IX and IY, to satisfy the deflection criteria. Position the crane to produce the worst loading condition. This can be accomplished using the equations found in AISC Manual Part 3 for cranes with two wheel end trucks on simple spans. For other wheel arrangements, the maximum moment can be obtained by locating the wheels so that the center of the span is midway between the resultant of the loads and the nearest wheel to the resultant. 
The maximum moment will occur at the wheel nearest to the center line of the beam. For continuous spans, the maximum moment determination is a trial and error procedure. Use of a computer for this process is recommended. Calculate the required bending moments MRX and MRY, including the effects of impact. Many engineers determine MRY by applying the lateral crane forces to the top flange of the runway beam. AIST TR-13 requires that the lateral force be increased because the force is applied to the top of the rail. This eccentricity of lateral load increases the magnitude of the lateral force to the top flange and requires consideration of a corresponding bottom flange lateral force and bending moment in the opposite direction. For sections without cap channels, select a trial section ignoring lateral load. To account for weak axis effects, select a section with wide flanges and several sizes larger than provided by MRX alone. For sections with cap channels, the appendix tables in AISC Design Guide 7 may be of assistance. If ASTM A36 cap channels are used on ASTM A992 steel beams, then lateral torsional buckling requirements must be based on the ASTM A36 material as well as the weak axis strength. Equations 14-1A and 14.1B are used to determine the strength of runway girders. The use of either equations is recommended when AIST TR-13 is not specified and the choice of which to use depends on whether the LRFD or the ASD design methodology is followed. The definitions of different terms that appear in the equations and the appendix tables are summarized on the right. Check the section with respect to web sidesway buckling as described in AISC specifications section J 10.4. We showed this check multiple times in the previous videos. Link in the description. Finally, when cap channels are used, design the weld connecting the channel to the flange. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.